Hi, this is Sam and welcome to Inglogic. In today's advanced vocabulary and listening lesson, we're going to talk about my recent holiday on the northeast coast of Italy. I come from Bologna, which is a city near the northeast coast of Italy, and that's where I always go on holiday with my mum, and we spent a week there this year at the beginning of July. Before you get the wrong end of the stick, that era of Italy does not match the idea of idyllic and glorious stretches of beach that your mind might conjure up when you think about Italy. If you want that, you need to go further down south or west. The area I go to is extremely famous for being very cheap, family friendly and a lot of fun, especially for young people. And since it's affordable, it attracts a lot of tourists and in general, it's always swarming with people. On the complete flip side, it's infamous for the bad quality of the water, which is very dirty and tends to look green because it's full of algae. Also, it tends to be very warm. Now, personally, I do not like swimming in cold water, so it's perfect for me, but a lot of people simply refuse to even dip their feet into the water by the shore as it repulses them. So, for people like me, who live in cities around this area, this is a very cheap and quick getaway for a weekend, for example. But those people that do go to the seaside specifically for the quality of water have to go elsewhere on their official holidays. Also, weather-wise, my region is excruciatingly scorching hot in the summer and glacially cold in the winter. The heat there in the summer is extremely uncomfortable and it literally drains your soul. It is not pleasant at all. Over here, I have a whole video on how to describe the heat. Just to give you an idea of what a typical beach looks like in my area, you can see that we have very carefully organised private beaches which comprise a cafe and through this cafe you rent a parasol and sun lounges, all of which can be quite expensive because you rent them by the day. We do have stretches of open beach where you don't have to pay and you can bring your own stuff, but the predominant style that people opt for is indeed the private beach. Remember, in that part of Italy, you must have some source of shade, so a parasol is basically compulsory if you want to survive. Some people do lie in the sun, but they can't do it for long because it's unbearable and also unhealthy. I absolutely detest the Italian heat, so when I'm on the beach, I'm constantly in the shade cast by the parasol. In England, however, it's much more common to have open beaches where you can rent sun lounges and little partitions to sort of separate yourself from other people, all of which is much cheaper than in Italy. But I would say that the most common custom is just to bring your own stuff. A lot of people just lie on the sand, others do bring their parasol, and it's amazing because here in England the sun and the heat are enjoyable. Before moving to England I had never sunbathed because I can't stand the feeling of the Italian heat on my skin, whereas here I can just lie there and bask in the positive heat and it's amazing. I know no one would ever associate England with the beach and the summer, but if you want to see what we have to offer, here you can find a video on my trip around England last summer, so you can see that we do have something going for us. Speaking of the weather in general, I'm a staunch defender of the London weather. Careful, I'm specifically talking only about London, not other areas of England where I know that we do have very bad weather. But for one reason or another, in London we have very pleasantly warm summers and not very cold winters, and I find that to be the perfect combination. In the summer we do have the sun shining over us and it's enjoyable and pleasant unlike its Italian counterpart. That being said, unfortunately this year both London and England in general have let me down because it's now the 18th of August when I'm filming this and so far we haven't had the remotest glimpse or glimmer of summer. We did have a couple of warm days in June that fooled us into believing the summer was here, but it was literally just a couple of days. I've been back here for over a month now, and the weather has always been pretty bleak and miserable. 
only yesterday and two days last week did the weather have a bit of mercy on us and I hope that by the time this video is released we'll have had a few more of those days. But what actually inspired me to make this specific video is the weather that I was presented with in Italy. Whilst right now it's sweltering hot everywhere in Italy, I think climate change struck us hard when I was there at the beginning of July. Don't get me wrong, for me the weather was phenomenal because for some reason it wasn't extremely hot. In fact, it was enjoyable. And luckily I left the day before a terrible heat wave struck Italy, so I missed all the suffering that Italians are enduring right now. While I was at the seaside, this happened. I was at the beach and suddenly this huge, dark, black storm cloud started eating its way through the sky towards us, almost like the devil was coming to claim our souls. We were extremely lucky, it turns out, because we got out of it perfectly unscathed. We only got a bit of rain, but the neighbouring villages took the full brunt of that cloud. Weirdly and worryingly, the area that I come from was struck by a destructive hailstorm a week after I left, and my village and the neighbouring ones were brought to their knees. I have a whole video here on how to talk about bad weather. The hailstones were as big as tennis balls and they destroyed my mum's car, the gutters, the roof tiles and it turns out we were actually lucky because in other houses the stones broke the windows and then dented the furniture inside. Today I want to look at the words cloud and storm. On top of what we all know a cloud is, we can also say a cloud of smoke was coming out of her house or I walked through a cloud of mosquitoes, and this refers to a large mass of smoke, dust or insects. It can mean something that makes you unhappy, worried or sad. The cloud of the impending war. She left the meeting under a cloud of fear for her job. The recent death of the office manager cast a cloud over the staff party. At the moment, my only cloud on the horizon is what my doctor might tell me tomorrow, means that what my doctor might tell me tomorrow is the only potential future problem that I have at the moment. We have storm cloud, thunder cloud, a thick layer of cloud can be described as a blanket of cloud. A thin layer of cloud is a veil of cloud. Long, thin pieces of cloud are wisps of cloud, and when we want to say the clouds disappear, we can say they lift or clear. If you have your head in the clouds, it means you're lost in thought and not focused on reality and what's happening. If you are on cloud nine, it's an informal way to say that you are very happy. She left the company under a cloud after those terrible allegations were made means that she wasn't trusted or popular because people thought she'd done something wrong. Every cloud has a silver lining means that every difficult or bad situation, a cloud, has something positive and good, a silver lining. We never really say the whole saying all the time. What we usually do is that if I tell you a story about a negative situation but then I want to highlight the fact that something positive came of it, I would say this is what happened and the silver lining is that something else happened. Her holiday was clouded by the fact that she knew her mum was sick means that her holiday was made less enjoyable, pleasant and more difficult. The window clouded up with steam means that the window became less clear to see through and the same goes for the water clouded and I couldn't see the fish anymore. The misinformation spread by the media is clouding the issue means that this misinformation is making the problem harder and more difficult to deal with. When the sky clouds over, it becomes full of clouds, and when your face and eyes cloud over, you start looking angry or sad. We all know what a storm is, and when we want to describe a situation where everyone is expressing their strong feelings about something all at the same time, we can say that the statement of the politician caused or provoked a storm of criticism or protest. 
Also, we can say that the Prime Minister found herself in a political storm when the truth came out. A freak storm is an unexpected, violent storm. A storm is brewing when it's likely to happen soon. It breaks when it starts suddenly and it blows up when it starts. It rages when it's happening now. You are in the middle of it and it's violent. It passes or blows itself out when it ends. If you ride out a storm, it means that you survive a storm without being damaged. The army stormed the building means they entered it and attacked it violently. The verb storm plus a preposition or an adverb means that you go somewhere fast in a way that shows that you're angry. So you can say that she stormed out of the room or after the meeting he stormed off. A perfect storm is an extremely bad situation caused by an unusual combination of very bad things all happening at the same time. So you can say that Covid was the final ingredient in the perfect storm caused by slow economic growth and rising prices. I'm not sure the president can weather the political storm he is in means that I'm not sure that he can deal with a very difficult situation without being too damaged. The Barbie film has taken the world by storm means that it's extremely successful in that specific place, in this case, the whole world. He was in the kitchen cooking up a storm means that he was cooking in the kitchen with a lot of energy. And if I say the outrage over what the actor has done is a storm in a teacup, he hasn't done anything that deserves such hatred, that refers to a disproportionate and unnecessary reaction of anger towards something small and unimportant. That's it for today. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel down below. And do let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the words that we've analysed today. And also if you've ever had any bad weather related experiences. In the meantime, I will see you next Tuesday with another explanation video.